Hello, this is Josh Pasmore, releasing false programming and helping us step into our full potential. Today, I want to talk about something that is a very touchy subject, the Bible. Uh, I'm going to read, uh, you know, and, and, and how the Bible, in, in what I want to say about this, it's kind of like there's pieces of the Bible that were designed by man, for sure. And whether it's through translation, whether it's through uh, the original people that wrote it down, whether, you know, whether, however that is, what I'm saying is there are pieces that are not good in the Bible. And so for us to First of all, realize this. It's kind of like we've been handed a plate of food as a kid, and there's a, 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 a piece that's rotten. And your parents are saying, no, eat the whole thing. It's all good. And that will make you sick, that rotten piece. So it's not to say that every piece of the Bible is bad. It's saying that there, that there could be bad pieces in it. And I want to read a, a quote to you. And this is a, uh, a really big quote, Always has always been a big quote to me. And I've read the Bible. And um, this was one that stood out to me. And, and I also read the Baha Gita, and there was a, a, a phrase in there where it said, if you go to attack your, you, you know, if you have to battle your brother and God tells you to kill him, you must kill him. So to me, I'm thinking, well, how do you know if it's really God? That's not a very good message for people. And so I stopped reading it. And so this is the Bible's version of that where I stopped reading the, the Old Testament. Deuteronomy 20.10. When you march up to attack a city, make its people an offer of peace, an offer of peace. If they accept and open their gates, all the people shall be, shall be subject to forced labor and shall work for you. Slavery. Where did that start? In the Bible. If they refuse to make peace and they engage you in battle, lay siege to the city. When your Lord God delivers it to your hand, put the sword Put to the sword all men in it. As for the women and children and livestock and everything else, you may take these as plunder for yourselves. And you may use the plunder your Lord God gives you from your enemies. This is how you treat all the cities. This is how you are to treat all the cities that are distant from you and do not belong to the nations nearby. Okay, I want to stop there for a second. This is the beginning of the paradigm of force and control and, and power over. This is the beginning of rape culture. This is the beginning of war. And this is the beginning of slavery. I want you to let that sink in right there. False programming. However, in the city of the nations, the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. Do not leave alive anything that breathes. Okay, so now we know why they came to America, cut down every tree. This is, this is what people were actually going by this book. Completely destroy them, the Hittites, the Amorites, Canaanites, the Prezites, the Jesuit, as your Lord God has commanded you. Otherwise, they will teach you to follow the detestable things they do in worshiping their gods. And you will sin against the Lord your God. So it's an order, a direct order, to destroy everyone that is not you. Uh, so I would even say the birth of ego. It's, it's the, the, the deciding that we're separate from others. Um, so as we step into this, this new full potential world, it's very hard to come to your full potential when you're coming from de dealing with uh, ourselves, a piece of ourselves that's destroying ourselves. How do we live our full potential when we're destroying ourselves? So... The first thing is to overcome the mind, the mindset of separation, to, to step out of that reality and that game and realize the systemic cause of a lot of this and how there, the, that the world was, has been taken over by an elite few. And to understand some of the key pieces that the Bible could actually have been a control measure for that.
if it was made by man for an intention to gain a personal gain, then the money system, everything that's been developed from that is going to be built in the same paradigm. And it's going to reflect that and support that same mission to enslave. So once slavery was abolished as bad and illegal, they, they, they just, they, money was already in its place. Money was already there ready to, 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 to support that same system in a different way. So how we're releasing that is by releasing the money system. And this is going to be another thing hard to digest. It's just like, well, what? We can't go kill our neighbor and just take their wife and do whatever we want with her and, her and their children and enslave them and do whatever we want? No, we can't. And what? We can't just you take a job that we're offering us a bunch of money and go spend it? No. It's supporting the same system. So, so we've got to redevelop how we're working together. We have to redevelop our economy. Um, we have to redevelop how we're treating each other and how we view the world. And so what it starts with, just as a beginning, is realizing that we've come from false programming and where the world's headed because of that. And so how important it is, like the four agreements, how, how important it is to have integrity with our word, how important it is to what we're following, what are we following, and if we're following a money system because it's all we know, we're supporting further the destruction of the world. And that's not fair to our children. And our children aren't going to understand this necessarily unless we teach them this. So what are we following? What are children following? What are we teaching them? So that's that's the where I want to leave this segment of, of finding our full potential and, and releasing old programming. Thank you for watching. I hope that together, as we move forward, we can, we can support each other in, in creating the best possible scenario for ourselves when it comes to, to how we're going to step into this new future together. So uh, I encourage you to do mastermind groups, to get together, to start to look into contribution economies. Uh, that's really the transition is the contribution economy. Take a look at before money was even invented. And look, we just helped each other build our houses. We helped each other garden. We ate the food together. Uh, it's more about if we build a house together, what we're doing in the house than who controls which doors because they built them. So let's start looking at our control measures, our force, force on other people, forcing anyone to do really anything because we have the right to do it. You know, like rethinking that. What gives us the right to force others into into anything, especially if it's forced labor? Uh, that's for us. Making someone's life, like ruining their life to, to serve us. That does not bring God to them. It doesn't bring it to us either. We're the same side of the duality. We're, we're playing the king-queen, and this is what money's doing to us today still. King, queen, and servant. You have money, you're a king and a queen. You have, don't, you're a servant. You're still playing that game. You're still involved in that energy. You're still going to be creating that reality for yourself, and you'll be dealing with all the pain and suffering of those around you, which means you won't be stepping into true wealth, which is happiness, joy, passion, purpose. So if you want to step into those things, it's we have to release all that programming. All right, thanks for watching.